of Reformed Baptist Church. Good morning. I am grateful that we have come together to observe and celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's scripture is coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Please listen to the word of our God. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And this is the word of our God, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Uh, let's go to our God in prayer. God our Father, we are so thankful, God, for uh, you being our Father and being your children, Lord, your sons and daughters. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being so merciful to us. Thank you for being patient with us, God. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, your son, who sacrificed his life for us, who stood uh, and substituted substitute for us, uh, receiving the cup of your wrath, the wrath that you brought on us. Thank you, God, for him. Thank you, Lord, that we now have peace with you and peace in you. Thank you, Lord, for our families. Thank you for Word Fellowship Reform Baptist Church and our, our pastor and our dear brother, Keelan Atkinson. And thank you for our brother Perry, who uh, taught your word this morning. Thank you, God, for bringing us together, Lord, to worship and praise you today. God, please forgive our sins and our disobedience. And God, please give attention to all the names and the circumstances uh, that uh, concern us, uh, our cares, our confessions, Lord. And please give attention to these things, God, for your intervention, for your, uh, for healing, for peace, uh, for reconciliation, God. And God, we worship you and praise you today, and we trust you, Lord, with all uh, aspects of our lives. All these things I pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. It's a Hallelujah. great thing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. God, we bless you and we honor you. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome to church. We welcome those of you who are also worshiping with us online. We ask those of you who are in person, please stand for the singing of our doxology as we enter into our praise and worship portion of today's service. Hallelujah. You look good, Word Fellowship. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise 
We want to start our praise and worship today. The Bible says that we should enter into his courts with thanksgiving. And so we want to come and just say thank you, God, for sending Christ. Thank you for saving us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're fellowship. Open up your mouth. Sing unto the Lord. For God is good and he's worthy to be praised this morning.
worship God. God, you are Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. He's our substitution, he's our atonement. Thank you, Jesus, you saved my soul, you, you made me whole, you renewed my mind, you refreshed my soul, God. I thank you, Jesus, for planting me by the rivers of water, God. I thank you, Lord, for the ways you're making, for the things you're doing. God, you're awesome. God, you're good. God, you're worthy. God, you're holy. And we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah. You reign, God. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Can someone just begin to bless the Lord? We thank you, God. Word fellowship, you sound good unto the Lord this morning. Well, y'all, it's, it's one of our favorites here, but we came to worship Jesus Christ. He reigns and he rules forever. We don't have to worry about no bridges going down. We don't have to worry about who the president is. We know that Jesus Christ rules and he reigns. So let's give him glory this morning. Let's give him honor. We're fellowship. Let's get ready to worship. Come on, who's ready to worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Some God, 
our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. The power and love our God is an awesome God. If you believe him, begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody know that our God is awesome? I say, anybody know that our God is awesome? Anytime in the world that we use the word awesome, it should apply only to our God. He's the only one who's awesome. Saints of the Most High God, we have come as the body of Christ to do holy business for our King. We have come in troubled times, but we have high spirits. We know that the eternal one is still on the throne. Saints, lift up holy hands. Lift high your voices. Praise the sovereign one. Mighty is our God. Holy are his judgments. And he's all together left. So in all your strength, with all your might, let's praise him. Praise Let's him. praise him. Praise Let's him. Let's praise him. Praise him. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You reign. You reign. Today's congregational hymn is Near the Cross. Those who are able, we ask that you please stand. If you're not, that's okay. We ask that you just join in and worship with us. Thank you, Lord, for the cross.
just be Good morning. Our weekly prayer service and Bible study resumes this Thursday. You can join us in person for prayer service. You can join us online or in person for Bible study at 7.30 p.m. The Outreach Ministry is sponsoring a diaper collection for the Pregnancy Network. The collection date has been extended to Sunday, March 31st. If you have any questions, please see Deacon Manuel Hyman. On behalf of Word Fellowship, Reformed Baptist Church, happy birthday and happy anniversary to everyone celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. May God bless you with many, many more. Please stay connected with the Word. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to YouTube. Have a blessed week.
magnify your name. Glorify your name. Oh, God, we magnify your name, glorify your name. That's why we're here, to magnify his name, to glorify his name. His name is the only name that's worthy to be praised. I was just checking the, the records and uh, Buddha, he's dead. Joseph Smith, he's dead. Muhammad, dead. Jesus, alive and well. Oh, we thank God for the resurrected Christ. Good morning, saints, and happy Resurrection Day to you. And uh, we thank and praise God for another opportunity to come and to worship him. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 20. I know this passage is so uh, familiar to you that you probably can tell the story all by yourself, but I thought it might be good for us just to revisit an old story and see if the Lord can give us some new insights from this old story. Uh, good morning to all of you who are watching us, by the way, of virtual ministry. Uh, please like, comment, and share that others may be blessed by our time in the word. Uh, let's breathe a word of prayer, read the scripture, see what the Lord will say. God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for life, for love, and for liberty. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We rejoice today. Our freedom is found in the person and the work of Christ. Lord, we come before your presence, needing your help, your strength, and your power. For apart from you, we can do nothing but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Come Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Help us to behold wonderful things from your law. Help us not just to be informed, but transformed by the renewing of our minds, proving we know what the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God is. Speak, Lord. We, your servants, are listening. It's in Christ's name we pray and ask. We say amen. John chapter 20 and I'm just going to read the first two verses and anybody who halfway knows me that uh, we will not uh, stop with just those two verses in uh, preaching this passage uh, contextually for actually it's a narrative 
and it all goes together. It actually flows all the way over to chapter 21. So actually, uh, I give you assignment on this resurrection day. When you go home, read chapter 20 and 21 uh, in its entirety, and certainly you will be blessed. Listen to the word of our God. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early. While it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. So reads the word of our God. I want to talk to you today on this subject, the need of the resurrected Christ. The need of the resurrected Christ. Now, in our text, as you read it and look at it closely, please don't close your Bibles, keep them open. The faithful followers of Jesus Christ in this text, they all have some issues. If you read the text, you can clearly see they're frightened, they're fatigued, they're faithless, and they are forgetful. Now, in a real sense, if you get this, if you can remember this, you got the sermon. They have been devastated by the greatest thing that could ever happen on their behalf. The best thing that could ever happen has devastated them. Jesus has been crucified. Now, we all know that Jesus was arrested on Thursday in that dark place called Gethsemane. And those of you who have been following us in a Bible study, we know that Gethsemane was a place of agony, a place where the Lord is wrestling uh, with the Father. And we saw this profound shock and stress that came upon our Lord that he said would have uh, taken his life even before the cross. And so he's under this great stress, but the way he responds to stress uh, is a little different from us. All right? Uh, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, uh, you know, get a bottle. Uh, he doesn't get a, a pill. Uh, he responds to this stress by persistent prayer to the Father. And there, while we look at him and see him in his persistent prayer, we see the disciples in their frequent failure because they are, uh, for some reason, incapable of staying awake. All Jesus asked them to do was sit, watch, and pray. And not pray for him. Pray for themselves that they enter not into temptation. And it wasn't long after his third visit to them and they're still sleeping, um, the mob shows up. Judas has betrayed the Lord and brought this mob there to arrest Jesus. 
So he's arrested on Thursday in the garden. Handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. They condemn him to death. And it's interesting that uh, they had a custom whereby they could have, uh, Jesus was innocent anyway, but they had a custom whereby Jesus could have been uh, let go, but rather than to let Jesus uh, go, they had a criminal who was a known criminal and one who uh, everybody knew he was guilty. And the people said, let Barabbas go and crucify Jesus. Let Barabbas go and crucify Jesus. Uh, let Barabbas go and crucify Jesus. Uh, let, let, let Atkinson go and crucify. Put, put your name there. A known criminal. And you, you said, well, come on, Pastor, you're being a little harsh, you know, I mean, calling me a criminal. Uh, but uh, all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God to some degree are criminals. So he's handed over to the chief priest. They condemn him to death. And actually, it's interesting when he was in the the garden and Peter, you know, who had been sleeping, but now he's awake. All of a sudden when he awakes, he, you know, starts to try and act kind of bad and he pulls out his sword trying to cut off a man's head, cut off his ear. So Peter was actually guilty, but not arrested. Jesus was innocent and he was arrested. I'm telling you, the gospel just flows all through uh, these narratives in the four gospels. He's condemned to death, delivered over to the Romans. And then he's mocked, he's spat upon, he's flogged, and he's killed. This is the innocent, sinless son of God. He is unjustly tried in their kangaroo courts. These are the courts of men. And you have to see this picture before us because it's a picture of majesty standing before madness. And the madness gets the opportunity to make a decision about majesty. Sounds like today, don't it? He is viciously assaulted and beaten. Uh, we have made it seem as if police brutality is something that has recently started, but uh, he was viciously assaulted and beaten uh, actually right there before the judge. He was crucified and buried on Friday. Now, the interesting thing about this narrative is that all of this happened in the presence of his disciples and followers. Can you imagine all of their hopes and their dreams are shattered? He's our leader. He's the one that we have looked to to bring about a change. Now, Jesus had already predicted to his disciples that the Son of Man, according to Mark 10, 33, and 34, that the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief uh, priest and scribe. They will condemn him to death. They will deliver him over to the Gentiles, the Romans, and they will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And after three days, he will rise. Again, I tell you, they have been devastated. They've been crushed by the greatest thing that could ever happen on their behalf. And they, just like many of us, 
have a misunderstanding of who Jesus is and why he came into the world. They were looking for this uh, social revolutionist, somebody to take the Romans' foot off of their necks. And many of us, even in the world in which we live today, uh, all we want really is some social change. But uh, we need to understand that Jesus did not come to be some social revolutionist. Jesus came to save us from our sin. And while Jesus was just a day away from facing the agony of the cross, uh, the disciples and his followers, they were having foolish arguments about who should be the greatest who was the greatest. And Jesus in Mark 10, 43 to 45, listen at what he said. But it shall not be among you. In the earlier verse, he had just said that that's the kind of stuff that Gentiles do. People that don't know God, they fight for uh, positions. They get into foolish arguments about who's the goat. He said, but it should not be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first must be a slave to all. Why, Jesus? For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for the many. He came to die for the sins of his people. And I'm glad to report to you that is exactly what he did. Friday was a devastating day when you go back and read uh, the Bible record. Friday was a devastating day in the life of Jesus and uh, his disciples and his followers, they, they had to be devastated. This Friday was so devastating that it actually caused them to forget Sunday. There are some days, some times, some stuff that can be so devastating that the good news will go way over your head. If you go back and read the record, Jesus never said, I'm finished. He said, it is finished. The work which I have been sent to do has been accomplished. I have drunk the cup of the Father's wrath in full. I have paid the penalty for the sins of my people in full. I paid for every one of their sins, past, present, and future. I don't know how you feel about that, man, but I thank God that all of my sins were paid by Christ. And you've heard it said before that the resurrection is actually God's amen to Jesus, it is finished. Because the truth is, even if Jesus pays the penalty and the Father don't accept it, we're still in trouble. So the resurrection is actually the proof, the evidence the validation that the Father has accepted Jesus' payment. It is 
uh, uh, allegorized actually in the Old Testament in Leviticus uh, when, uh, when the, the high priest on uh, the Day of Atonement with all of his uh, uh, garments on and having to do things just like God had prescribed it with the bells hanging down at the end. He would go in to make sacrifice for the people. And the people would stand outside waiting to know if their sins would be forgiven for another year. And the way that they knew that God had accepted the payment was when they saw the smoke come up. If the smoke didn't come up, they knew they were in trouble. But when they saw the smoke come up, hey, we good for another year. What I'm trying to tell you today, saints, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, when Jesus rose from the grave, you're not good for another year. You're good for throughout eternity. He has taken care of the payment once and for all. You say, well, well, well why is that so uh, important? Because Ezekiel, in chapter 18 and verse 20, Ezekiel the prophet said, the soul that sent it shall die. So the requirement for sin is death. And that's exactly what he did. See, you have to understand, our sin, your sin, my sin, has offended the righteousness, the holiness, and the justice of Almighty God. Paul caught on, and he put it like this in Romans 3 and 23. He says, for all have sinned, not y'all, but all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm trying to tell you, sin must be paid for. Either Jesus paid for your sin or you'll pay for it yourself. Well, how you know it's got to be? Well, because Paul picked it up in Romans 6 and 23. He said, for the wages of sin is death. You didn't get that. Sin don't go on sale. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift, hallelujah, praise God for the Lamb. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hmm. That which God demanded, he provided in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Oh, saints. We need it. I need it. Someone to be my sin bearer. Yeah, yeah, I needed somebody to be my sin bearer. And, and they had to be a sin bearer that could deal with my past, my present, and my future. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you we need it up. A bloody Jesus. We needed a, a condemned Jesus. We needed a, a crucified Jesus, a beaten Jesus, a, a, a buried Jesus. And the reason I needed that, because that was what I represented. I should have been condemned. I should have been crucified. I should have been beaten. And that's why I'm afraid of preachers and those who would uh, claim that they're preaching uh, the gospel who is trying to uh, present to you a, a crossless Christianity. Yeah, a Christianity that, 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 that's free from pain and, and sorrow and difficult. 
where the songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Saints, not only did we need a bloody Jesus, we need it, get this, and we still need a resurrected Christ. You didn't catch that. I said, we, we need it. Then, a resurrected Christ. But not only did I need a resurrected Christ 2,000 years ago, I need a resurrected Christ today. So because he is risen, we have confirmation and validation that our sins are paid in full. Oh, bless be the name of God. See, we needed the resurrection of Christ 2,000 years ago, and we need it today. What do you mean? Well, let me share a few things about this text. Go to my seat. I know you're ready for your Easter dinner. In our text, Jesus has just risen, Elder Moore, just like he said. That's a good place to say amen. <laughs> he had just risen like he said. The very thing he told them he was going to do, he did it. That's somebody I think worthy to be trusted and followed when, uh, when they do just what they say. But again, keep in mind, he's already risen just like he said, but they have been devastated by the greatest thing that could ever happen on their behalf. So when we look close at the text, I'm hoping, with the Spirit's help, that you will see why you presently need the resurrected Christ. On the first resurrection Sunday, that's when this was. Notice what we have. Notice the people who make up this, this narrative. Please get these in your notes because uh, I, I, I promise you, if not today, you'll find yourself in their category of life. Maybe not today, but the first thing I see, I see a hurting and grieving sister. I see a sister, she is heartbroken, heartbroken. She is trying, making every effort within herself to find Jesus. Keep in mind, she's already saw him crucified and beaten. She's already convinced that he's, so she's trying to find the dead Jesus that she had loved so dearly. So what is she doing? She's looking for the living amongst the dead. She's looking for a live man in a dead place. And to show how she's hurting and grieving, she has tears in her eyes. And I can imagine that the tears in her eyes probably obstructed her vision. She's grieving over what she saw happen to the Lord, a hurting and grieving sister. But there's something else we see in this passage when you read it closely. Uh, there are some frightened and fearful disciples. Uh, if I could put it in a way that you could really understand it, uh, I know, you know, we use the word frightened and fearful. They scared. 
I mean, they are scared. And the reason I know that they're scared because the text says that they are locked in the house for fear of the Jews. So what do you have? You got a hurting, grieving sister who's heartbroken and you got some frightened, fearful disciples locked in the house in fear. They have been uh, incarcerated by fear. Fear has them locked up. Hurting, grieving sister. Frightened disciples locked in. An unbelieving brother. I think Thomas get a bad rap. Everybody always call him Doubting Thomas. All right? Uh, but I don't really think he was doubting. I think Thomas... Uh, he has a problem. Do me a favor and say problem. Do, do, do you know anybody that lives today that don't sometimes have problems? And here, here he is. He said, I won't believe unless I see him for myself. Now, when I first read that, you know, I was like, man, you know, he's just, just rebellious, you, you know. And, but then I started to think about it. He has a problem. And his problem is in receiving their witness. They've told him, we have seen the Lord. Now, now, I'm not making an argument saying that he, he should have just took their word, but I did do a little digging in the Bible. And one of the people that told him that they had seen the Lord, Sony, was Peter. This the same Peter <laughs> that when the Lord said, you know, that the... Uh, when they strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. He says, oh, not me, Lord. Do everybody else forsake you and run out on you. You can count on me. I'll be with you. Matter of fact, I'll die with you and I'll die for you. This is the one who's telling Thomas, we say in Christ. Oh, I hope you can see it. Sometimes a life can mess up lips. Even though they're telling the truth. Thomas had watched all of them along with him abandon Christ. So ain't no lot of credibility with any of them. And the truth is, if you are to know Christ, uh, you know, thank God for mamas, grandmamas, uncles, and aunties that keep pointing you to Christ. But the truth is, grandmama can't get you to know Christ. All they can do is try to live a life and point you. It, there ain't no such thing as uh, inherit your faith. You know, I, th I, you know, I come from a Christian family. No, 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 it don't work like that. Everybody has to come into relationship with God through a personal relationship with God. And watch this. The ones who was telling them, we seen Jesus. They are telling him, we seen Jesus, we seen him for ourselves. Well, how did they come to see Jesus? Jesus showed up, appeared, 
while they were in their locked doors. So my point is, Jesus had to reveal himself to them. And Thomas is saying, the only way I'm going to believe is that I see for myself. You know, I believe a whole lot of people would be saved a whole lot of wasted time in church if they just understood that. That it ain't your church activity. Man, it's your personal relationship with the true and living God. And when you have that true and genuine relationship, guess what? You want to go to church. You want to be in church. So, what do we have in the text? Hurting and grieving sister. Frightened, fearful disciples, unbelieving brother. Then I see something else. You got an unproductive fisherman. What do you mean? You go over, you'll find that, you know, Peter, he's about to, he's just going to go back fishing, go back to his old occupation. And I think everybody can relate to that sometimes you know you feel so bad in life or whatever and you just feel like I need to do something else I need a new start a fresh start but he finds out he's an unproductive fisherman because he fish all night and don't catch nothing so how do we start bringing this together Mary can't find Jesus her heart is broken the disciples are incarcerated by fear. Thomas can't believe and Peter can't fish. This is what you got here. They are affected. Well, can you explain to me, Pastor, in what ways they're affected? Well, I'm glad you asked. They're affected emotionally. They're affected mentally. See, the Bible talked about mental health even before, you know. They're affected emotionally, mentally, physically, psychologically, socially, and economically. They can't make no money. Can't catch no fish. And again, I say the greatest thing that could ever, ever happen on their behalf has occurred. Well, a few intelligent questions of the passage, and we get out of your way. Can I ask you a question? I told you I don't like you asking questions while I'm preaching. But I'll go ahead and let you ask your question. Okay, go ahead. Pastor, with all the devastation that they have faced, how are they going to face tomorrow? Okay, well, that was a good question. I have to give you that. How are they going to face tomorrow? How are they going to be able to get through life after having such a devastating experience? How would they move forward? How would they get past where they are? And if you notice, all of them got issues, but all of their issues are different. But even though their issues are different, their need is the same. Different issues, same need. They all need the same solution. Where do you go? To find a solution for all different kind of issues, no matter what the issue is. I know, you know, if you, if you have sinus problems, you know, they give you some sinus medicine. If you got diabetes, they give you diabetes medicine. You know, if you got 
high blood pressure, they give you high blood, you, you know, it's, none of those medicines are the same. They have a specific medicine for a specific issue. Now, if you like me, and you got more than one issue, don't you wish they could just give you one pill? <laughs> that would take care of everything, you know? Uh, I'm so thankful, grateful to God now that, you know, it used to be, you know, you had uh, uh, diabetes, you know, you check your blood sugar and you, you know, you have to stick your finger, and put it on the thing and, you know, after a certain period of time, man, your fingertips are just like, you know, they're like calluses or something. Well, now they didn't came out, they got thing and, I guess I'm doing free advertisement for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, called Dexcom. Dexcom, uh, G7 is the best one, G6, that's the old one. But Dexcom, you know, uh, 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 Raven, I just put the sensor on my arm and then uh, I link it to my phone and whenever my blood sugar gets so low, it'll beep. And if it get so high, it'll beep. So it allows me to uh, better regulate what's happening with my blood sugar by keeping me informed. Now, I said all of that to say, again, you got all these different issues, but you got to have a specific thing in order to deal with them. The best thing about Jesus is Jesus can deal with all the issues. You know, if you have a problem with your eyes, what do you do? You go see a, uh, what is it, optometrist. If you're, you know, having, you know, problem with your nerves, you go see a neurologist. You see all that, but, 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 but Jesus is the one that you can go to for everything. So what was it that they needed in the text? They needed the knowledge and the presence, oh help me Lord, of the resurrected Christ. They need, watch this, they have no ability to find him. Mary don't find him, he finds Mary. And even when she saw him, she couldn't recognize him. She didn't recognize him until he called her name. Oh, what you hear me today? You will never know Jesus until you hear him call your name. The Bible says, my sheep, I know them, and I call them by their name. So she couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't find him. The disciples, fear got them so bad, they locked behind the doors. Notice, they got the doors locked for fear of the Jews so that can't nobody get in. Fear has them keeping everybody away. But fear can't keep Jesus away. And he doesn't have to come in through the door. He just appeared. He just appeared and they missed. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you, you, you can lock all your doors, put your burg alarm on. When he's ready to come in, he's coming in. He can't be kept out. If he desires, 
They come in. Well, notice this. The reason I wanted to approach this like this because I wanted you to see that we all are just like them. Matter of fact, it's probably somebody sitting here even this morning who has a broken heart. Something has happened. Maybe you lost a loved one and, and you just can't seem to get over it or get past it. Broken heart. Maybe somebody sitting, you're fearful. The doctor has given you a report and it doesn't look favorable. And so that illness is causing you to live in fear and, and shut the door and kind of keep yourself isolated and away from people. Maybe you're that unbeliever. People have been telling you what the word of God says, but, you know, I mean, you just... <laughs> You say, I can't believe until I hear it. Uh, I, I, you know, God's going to have to, and, and, and you're right. If God don't show it to you, you'll never see it. Maybe you're that unproductive person. Man, you've been working uh, hard as, oh, I had to catch myself. I almost said, uh, man, you've been working hard as, 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 uh, um, hard a snack. And with all of your hard work, doesn't seem like any production's coming from it. You still end up with more bills than you got money. You know, man, you're doing everything to try to care for your children and take care of your home or whatever, but, but, but life just seems so unproductive. Every time you make two steps forward, you'll push back three or four steps. Well, here's the good news of the text, and I'm done. The resurrected Christ in the text showed up where they were. And I'm here to tell you today that he can and will show up where you are. And just like he revealed himself to them, he'll reveal himself to you. And according to the text, and I'm done, he showed up and he gave them three things when he showed up. First of all, he shows up and he gives them peace to calm their fears. Yeah, that's in verse 20. Secondly, he gave them power to perform his will and for their witness because he said, just like the father sent me, I'm getting ready to send y'all. And so if they are going to be effective witnesses, they need some power. Because the issues that are in their life has pretty much robbed them and stripped them of all their power. If Paul would have been there, he'd have told them, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And if you are a true believer today, guess what? You ain't looking for no power. True believers don't look for power. We possess power. You just need to start utilizing the power that you have. He gave them peace. He gave them power. Oh, I love this one. And he gave them purpose. 
because what they had saw happen to them, to him, had robbed them of their purpose. But in some ways, it was good. It was good because their purpose needed to be removed so that his purpose could be presented. Because sometimes in life, we are pursuing purposes that is not God's intended purpose. The word purpose, it's the original intent of what was wanted by the maker. It's what was wanted that made the maker make it. So God has purpose for his people and his purpose for them was to be witnesses. Well, there were some good questions that you asked. How are they, how are they gonna face tomorrow? How is they gonna get through life? Well, somebody might be asking that question of themselves. Well, here's what I would say to you. Praise God for the resurrected Christ. How are you going to face tomorrow? How are you going to get through life? Well, I use the lyrics of a wonderful song. And the lyrics say, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and he died in order to buy my pardon. Oh, and that empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Yeah, but how am I going? Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. It's because he lives. All of my fears are gone. And because I know, now I know who holds the future. And life is worth living. Why? Because he lives. And then the writer went on to say, oh, how sweet to hold a newborn baby, to feel the pride and the joy he brings. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. But that last verse, it has that eschatological twist to it. But then one day, mother, I'm going to cross the river. <laughs> I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then, as death gives a way to victory, I'm going to see the lights of glory. And I'll know he lives. He lives. Oh, he lives, saints. He lives. To ever make intercession, whatever your issues are, he's there standing ready to meet your needs. Take a moment and meditate on what you've heard. Take your broken heart, take your fears, 
Take your unbeliefs to the resurrected Christ. Take your unproductive efforts. Take them to the cross. And leave them there. If you're here today and you don't truly know Christ for yourself, I'm, I, I, I'm saying that you could say without a shadow of a doubt, I say, come to Christ. He died for your sin so that you don't have to. But it's required of you to repent from your sin and to come to him. Not come to, come to Christ. Christ and Christ alone can and will save you. There is none, yet there is room. Saints, I pray that you will, if you don't remember nothing I said, just remember whatever issues that come up in your life, the resurrected Christ can handle them. Don't allow your failures, your mistakes, your successes, don't let nothing bring you to a place to make you think you don't need Christ. If you're doing good, guess what? You need Christ. If you're doing bad, guess what? You need Christ. And sometimes people will, you know, in their own little pious self-righteousness, They'll try to make you think and convince you that, uh, that you need Christ more than them. That's sick. Yeah, they'll try to, you, you see what I'm saying? See, see if, you would, if you would act and live more like me, you'd be all right. No, if I would act and live like you, I'd be in hell. You ain't what I need. Christ is what we need. Is that clear? And if you read on through John and get over there and ask, guess what you're going to find out? All of them over in the upper room. They're in the upper room. Waiting on the promise of God for the spirit to come. And man, when I read about the people who was in that room, man, it make me shout. Peter was in that room. Mary was in that room. Mary had come from, I mean, a terrible background. And so when I look at the people who was in that room, I said, man, that's hope for me. Yeah. Church ain't a place for a bunch of good people. Church is a place for those who are bad, know they bad, and know they need help. All right. Praise the Lord. I believe I fulfilled what the Lord would have me to do. It's now time for our... Greetings, everyone. Your faithful stewardship through your tithes and offerings helps to further the ministry of Jesus Christ. You can give online by visiting givelify.com and searching Word Fellowship Reformed Baptist Church, or you can give by mail. We do ask that you do not send cash, or you can also schedule a pickup day and time with a designated deacon. 
and make sure you're staying connected with the word. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sunday. Happy Resurrection 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 Sunday.